Sword Girl Spring. Sword Girl Spring. That is the final accoutrement this needs. This week we're going to be continuing the journey through the pages of the Tudor Tailor and making an English gown that will go on top of the kirtle that I made previously and coordinate with the French hood and the shift that I made last time. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll link them down below and up in the cards. As with my other projects, I'm doing this on a very tight budget, so this is going to be made entirely out of materials that I got from thrift stores. The outer material is an old curtain that's a little bit sun bleached, but it is a rather sumptuous velvet material. It's obviously not real velvet, but it has the right sort of look. At a thrift store, I found a few yards of an olive green fabric that coordinates really well with outer fabric, so that is going to be the lining. So we'll go ahead and get into the making of a 16th century English gown. <laughs> So I'm trying a new projector setup. I'm projecting it on my closet instead of my back wall. Oh my god. Are you serious right now? As with prior pattern making, I made sure that the scale was correct before tracing everything out. Then I cut it out of a mock-up fabric to check the fit. Naturally, this was all overseen by a very small pin-eating monster. back fits pretty well. The skirt panels were too large to easily project, so I was forced to actually measure them out this time around. This is my first attempt at drafting the back of the skirt for the gown, and I actually used measurements for once, so I'm terrified that it is incorrect, but it's being double-checked by my supervisor. I still need to draft the front panel, which is cut back a bit more. It'll attach on this side and be more open. So the pockets go over here. This will be the front. It's a little bit longer here than here and kind of pops out in the middle, so I need to do all that. I cut the skirt pattern out of various pieces of packing paper that I'd Frankenstein together to make one big enough sheet. Then I ran into an issue. So I'm faced with a bit of a dilemma. I have a very limited amount of velvet and I think if I do the full width of the skirt that the Tudor Taylor suggests, that I will not have enough to also do sleeves in velvet. I could solve this either by doing the sleeves in a coordinating color, or I could potentially shorten the skirt in the velvet material and use the lining to make up the difference so it's the right length. Or the third option is that I will reduce the back from two panels to one slightly larger panel, and then I'll have enough velvet for the puff sleeve, but I think to figure that out I need to cut it out of the lining, and I don't want to cut it out of the lining, find out that that's wrong, and then not have lining, and not have the material that I need to do the other options. I'm gonna pick one and hope it works. I measured my waist to see if option three would work, and then when I realized it wouldn't, I did a little boogie to celebrate avoiding disaster. Bodice front, bodice back, sleeve, sleeve band, where it should be taped. The front skirt piece, the back skirt piece. Though I overcomplicated things in the design phase, putting the garment together was actually super simple. It's mostly just straight seams and nothing too fancy. For accuracy, I marked out all the pattern pieces in chalk, remembering to put in a half inch seam allowance around the entire garment. Then I carefully cut the pieces out. To leave the openings for the pockets, I stitched down and then did a back stitch, skipping over the spot where the pocket opening would be, and then continuing down beneath it. I just stitched all of the skirt panels together, leaving the openings for the pockets. Wow, it's quite large. It's said to leave three inches in the front. I probably won't leave that on the velvet version. I guess it's time to cut out the bodice and see about that. And it says to do the pieces separately. So the lining layer will be done first, and then the outer layer will be. Due to my neglect of his person, Julian staged a sit-in on the project at this point. On the bodice, the side seams are really easy to line up, but the seam on the neck is a little bit curved and more confusing, but it does match up. Then Julian decided that my kirtle was his new summer home. Then I trimmed a bit of excess from the center front. It is time to cut into the velvet 
and I should have just enough to do the skirts and the bodice if I'm very, very careful. I might have enough for decorations for the sleeves. I don't have enough for the sleeves themselves. It does say to use a light fabric for the sleeves, so I think it's okay that I'm using the lining instead. And then if I have little extra pieces, I want to use that as the decoration on the sleeves. I'm gonna get to placing the pattern pieces and then cut it out. The problem with velvet that I just realized is that there's a pile to it, and so it all needs to be cut in the same direction. But I was gonna do it with the skirt panels kind of flip-flopped going in two directions here to make the most out of the fabric that I have. I am very afeared, but I'm glad I googled it before I cut. I knew I was afraid for a reason. There's always something that I don't know that I don't know. They don't know that we know they know we know. <laughs> but this time I looked it up first. I'm sure there's still something that I don't know that I don't know, but we'll find out in the edit. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I threw caution to the wind and traced the pattern onto the fabric. It's all gonna be all right, right? Just do it, just cut the fabric. I can do it, I can do it. Then it was time for the fateful and irrevocable task of actually cutting the fabric. It's time to sew along the center back. This is all four, two center back and then two side front pieces. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I need to, oops. There's still a pen in there. And it's overlapping more than I intended, but it looks pretty good. This is an old curtain, so it is quite like faded up in front. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna just leave it as a aesthetic statement or if I'm gonna try and over dye it. Pretty cool, actually. I guess it depends on how weird the bodice looks. Already set up the center back. This will go here and attach to the skirt at the bottom. And now I need to pin on the sides. And I had just barely enough fabric. This was one curtain and I didn't think there'd be enough fabric. And I did cut it in different directions, which is not ideal with velvet, but it's not velvet velvet, it's velvet-like. And the pile kind of goes in several different directions, which gave me that flexibility to cut it going in different directions. And so far it hasn't looked too wonky. So, oh my god, I'm so glad I cut these all in the right direction. Because I'm a little loosey-goosey with right side, wrong side. And on most of my fabrics, there's not a very distinct right or wrong side, so I can get away with it. But this, one side has the fluffy pile on it, and one side has this, um, like, satin sheen to it. If I were to cut it wrong, you'd know. And there's not enough to fix it. Why is the lining so much more voluminous than the actual skirt? <laughs> I might have to, like, stitch them together a little bit. That's kind of a cool look, though. I'm getting, like, Kaylin M. Nell vibes from uh, Legend of the Seeker a little bit. The velvet right sides together. I've pinned all along the bodice, starting at the shoulder seams, center back, and then down to the waist. But I pinned this, I'm gonna run it through the sewing machine, and then flip it and give it a try on. I'm gonna flip to see how it turned out. One. I feel like there should be more corners than this. What is happening? It's looking pretty good, honestly. <laughs> it got much tighter. Let me show you a long boy. He's very long. What a long boy. The front closure, I have this kind of, I don't think it's period appropriate, but it's this golden flower thing. And I think that will look very cool. It's official. I love this outfit. I'm gonna wear it just around the Sword Girl Spring. Shout out to Bianca Hernandez, book hoarding, for coming up with that genius idea. Sword Girl Spring. Sword Girl Spring. That is the final accoutrement this needs. I'm sewing in these channels. You do these three first. Sew down the edges and leave an opening to put in the boning. And then you do this over the top, but you skip over here so you'll be able to bone it. So you're just gonna sew the pieces in between. It'll look like this, where this bit's open, but it's still continuous, so I've got boning in all of this. So it will kind of hold its shape when on. And naturally, it's just dollar store zip ties. I sewed along the edges of this cross green ribbon, doing a little back stitch at the beginning and end of each line, making sure to skip over the parallel pieces. Naturally, this ribbon's from the dollar store. So I finished sewing these in. I've got to sew up and press open the center back and then put gathering stitches along the top here. 
and now I've pressed it open, also put a gathering stitch across the top, and now it's time to bone. Insert an appropriate joke here. So I'm just wrapping these two together to unify them into one extra long bone. The second one I did is perfect. It's standing up really well, it's staying together. The next part of this will be to put gathering stitches in these, sew up these center back seams, and then gather that down until it sits over this. And then next will come uh, putting the arm bands on everything, and then the fearful project of setting the sleeves in that armhole. Pains me to say it. The pains that are gonna go on the sleeve are only half done. I've cut and pressed them, and now I need to stitch along here to connect them. I took great pains to make these. While these are looking a little bit rough, this is the general shape that's gonna go over the sleeve. These are the panes that are gonna kind of poof out around the more full bits of the sleeve. We have the center front and center back, and then each of these, it kind of creates a little bit of a football shape. They're not very super well tailored right now. I'm probably gonna cut them down a bit to make them more the correct size, but they are all lined. I just did a spaced back stitch along both sides. I think the result was just much better doing it all by hand. As you can see, hardly any of the stitches came all the way through to the outside. I was trying to go just through the lining and through the seam allowance and not catch the outside layer at all. And it's not particularly neat, but I do enjoy doing a little bit of handwork on each project. It's nice to have a meditative moment to really be in touch with the piece that you're creating. Basted the base piece and the other layers together with the panes in. Kind of done a test set of this sleeve. I think you're supposed to attach the panes on top because this is quite bulky. And then the last thing would be to put the armband on here. I still need to finish off this inside edge. I want to do a space back stitch along here to keep the lining in because right now it is a little bit loose. So we're getting to the end of this construction and the sleeve is the biggest thing I have left to do. There's about a half inch seam allowance all the way around and they say to snip into it and then it sounds like I'm supposed to turn it under and kind of finish the edge before I set the sleeve. That's what I'm understanding from the instructions, but it feels wrong still. Or this is quite tight. Opening up the seam allowance all the way will help with the tightness and then stitch them together. I, I'm not sure if it says this in the instructions, but it seems like you're supposed to either leave the lining free and use that to kind of cover the raw edge or you can bind the raw edge on the inside and I need to finish the band on this sleeve. I started the band on the other sleeve and then I abandoned it because it came time to whip stitch. And I should do that before it's set. This is quite bulky, so it's easier to stitch the band on before this is set. So I'm gonna do that for the other sleeve first and then, um, then I'll worry about clipping and whipping and all of that jazz. I still need to finish the hem all the way around. It's a bit wonky, but what they're asking me to do is to fold the hem up and then take the lining down and do it like this and then I've just got a stitch across the bottom. So this has been sewn together and pressed open and I'm going to put this around the bottom here. I'll line them up together with right sides together and pin it in place. But I will use the bottom edge of this as a guide and sew just about a half inch up all the way around starting at the back. not quite perfect. There's a couple of puckers. I think it's good enough where I shan't redo it. It looks pretty good. We'll tuck that under. Pretty fancy. After a couple of hours of extremely fruitful work on a Friday night, I've created one lovely band and one really ugly band that I refuse to fix. And I've kind of basted this in. Then I had to give up for the night because it's like halfway in and it's already defeated me and there's still another sleep to go. Dun dun dun! It's looking pretty good. There's something wrong with how this sleeve is set. I think I need to seam rip it and place it some somehow differently. I stitched on the closure here and it's not historically accurate at all, but it's beautiful and after I added on a bit of a shank here, it is functional as well. I think I cut this fabric a little bit in the wrong 
grain direction because it is very loosey-goosey and really wants to come away from everything else. It didn't give exact grain direction so I, I guessed that it was straight along the seam edge and so everything else was at a little bit of an angle but I think it should have been kind of straight grain down the center rather than along the the flat seam line here because it's it's got too much give to it. There were a lot of variables in this project and I wasn't sure if it was going to come together. I was afraid there wasn't enough fabric, I was afraid it was in too bad of a condition to look nice, and although I am posing like I'm trying to take an awkward senior photo, I think the outfit looks really, really good. And naturally I had to do the biggest flex by showing that this has pocket openings. I'm still a little frustrated with the way the lining wants to pucker out, but I'll probably come back and fix that at a later date. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you didn't get to check out the other videos in this series, I link them down below so you can watch those. If you've been enjoying these Tudor shenanigans, you can also get my Shakespeare-themed coloring book, Color the Bard, that's linked down below as well. It's full of illustrations of his quotes, scenes from his plays, and scenes from his life. Thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe, and in the meantime, keep making.